something about it, I don't know what it is, I've come back here a number of times looking for the ideal conditions and I've yet to get the ideal condition. I'll tell you how the leaves came down, the great tree to his children said. You're getting sleepy, yellow and brown, yes, very sleepy, little red. It is quite time to go to bed. Ah, begged each silly pouting leaf, let us a little longer stay. Dear father tree, behold our grief, tis such a very pleasant day, we do not want to go away. So for just one more merry day, to the great tree the leaflets clung, frolicked and danced and had their way, upon the autumn breezes swung, whispering their sports among. Hello and welcome back to another episode of my photography vlog and you might remember from a previous episode me stood in exactly the same spot here when I was out here for a sunrise and I was looking for some beautiful light and some fog but there was fog in the background and there was no fog in the woods that I wanted to shoot. So now we're at the end of autumn and I want to give one last go to get a photograph of my tree. So that tree has something like I said in the episode that I recorded here, something special about it, I don't know what it is but today there looks like there's going to be some nice light. There's a nice bit of light in the background there and actually as I look behind you can see there's some maybe some trees that have been felled they weren't knocked the last time I was here, so that's actually new work that's been done. But regardless, we're going to head into the wood that's behind you here. We're going to hopefully get some nice photographs. It is starting to rain now as well, so it might be nice, may not be nice, but it's the last of autumn, like I said, so I'm going to give it that last go. So let's go, let's have a look at this tree and see what we can pull out of it with the autumn colours that we have, or the last of the autumn colours, rather. the tree he will forget and let us stay until the spring if we all begs and coax and fret but the great tree did no such thing he smiled to hear their whispering come children all to bed he cried and ere the leaves could urge their prayer he shook his head and far and wide fluttering and rustling everywhere down sped the leaflets through the air I saw them on the ground they lay, golden and red and huddled swarm, waiting till one from far away, white bedclothes heaped upon their arm, should come to wrap them safe and warm. The great bear tree looked down and smiled, good night dear little leaves, he said, and from below each sleepy child replied, good night, and murmured, it's so nice to go to bed. We've arrived here now and as per the previous episodes, like I said, there's this tree here. It's at the back of a woodland that I normally go to maybe 10 or 15 minutes from my home. But there's something about it. I don't know what it is. I've come back here a number of times looking for the ideal conditions and I've yet to get the ideal conditions. I figured, you know what, today I'm going to come out here. It's the end of autumn, like I said, from the intro. And we have a small, tiny bit of color that's remaining here, just up to the left-hand side of the tree. What it's going to do is add a nice touch of color to the image, but also with this tree, it's quite unusual because every time I come here, I always underexpose the image. And the reason I underexpose the image is because the way the light falls on the top of the tree, you can kind of see it in your frame there. It kind of gives a fluorescent green glow to the trunk of the tree. And if I was to expose that normally, then everything else in the background would be bright. This would be bright, but you wouldn't be able to see the tree jump from the frame itself. So by underexposing and only looking at the brightest part, which would be on top of the tree here, it really does give a different image. 
and a nice view as well to this tree also. Ideally, I wanted to have fog. I've come back here four times since the last episode to look for fog and I still haven't gotten fog. So I'm not going to get it now because like I say, we're at the dying parts of autumn, but I may get fog obviously later, but not without any color in those leaves. I will continue to try, but this tree, like I say, thinks I think it does give some beautiful images. I'm going to take a number of shots here. I'm going to take my traditional shot first and foremost while I still have the light. And I'm going to then put on my long lens and I'm going to take some intimate detailed shots of this tree. They might work out, they might get something different, but I'm going to experiment anyway and take a couple of different shots of this tree with trying to get the color of the leaves as well that are there in the background. So I'll show you the first shot here. I've played around with some different um, exposure types. So I started at F9 and went up to F11 and like I say, changing the exposure to make sure that it's underexposed on the histogram. So, you know, it looks like everything is dark, but it makes the brighter part of the tree fluorescent kind of green and jump. So that's the first shot here. I'm going to play around now. we we'll get a couple of different ones. I'll put on the long lens. Maybe we'll get a shot. Maybe we won't get a shot, but it's always good to experiment anyway, because there's nothing wrong. There's nothing incorrect by experimenting with photography. And you never know, you might get a beautiful shot in the end of it. Long lens on now. I spotted at the very base of the trunk here where it actually had cracked a mushroom that's growing but on top of the mushroom there's some moss on that mushroom which is slightly different nothing that I'm going to be overly excited by but with the long lens I have to come a fair bit back actually I'm probably around about maybe four feet back uh, I'm at 200 mils so I'm zoomed all the way in I've tried to go in further as well, but you know, with the lens, and don't forget with a long lens, you've got two types of focus distances. So this is at 1.3 meters, and then you can go from three meters to infinity as well. So I've now set it to the 1.3 meter part. And even at that, when I'm taking the shot, I'm shooting here at uh, F4 at the moment, and I'm going to take four different shots four different areas, front, back, left, right. So it makes sure that everything is in focus because even at F4, you've got such a very small plane of focus. I took a couple of shots as well at F8, at F9 and F11. And I just like the whole idea of the F4 because it allows the background to follow the focus, gives more of a focus itself within the image to the mushroom. And it's slightly different shot, but you know, a kind of a up close intimate shot of this uh, fungus that's growing out of this tree. But I'll show you that there now. And now that we've got the long lens on, I'm gonna go further on back up. I'm going to zoom in at 200 mil, and that will hopefully be able to give me uh, a nice bit of a compression within the scene, within this image also. So I'll show you this image here, and we'll head back up further, and we'll zoom back in then. moved back up now we're on about 30 or 40 feet away from the tree with the long lens I'm at 200 mil and I'm framing the shot very similar actually to what I would frame it normally but slightly to the right because I want to be able to get the color in the trees on the left hand side of the frame when I'm taking the shot here I took a couple of shots actually again f8 um, f11 but 
I've actually opted to go for an F4 shot. And the reason I want that is I want the tree to be in focus, but any of the clutter that's in front or in the back and stuff like that, I want that to fall away or fall forward so that you only have the focus on the subject matter being the tree. It's a different shot. I don't know if it's going to be, again, my favorite. The light is actually quite dull, so there must have been a bank of cloud or something, but there's a bank of cloud up here, which is blocking any light coming in here, so it's quite dull at the moment. But looking back out over here, where we first started when I introduced this episode, I can see nice light now hitting those logs. So maybe I'll just get a nice bit of last light that will come through here. Might light that up nicely and make it pop and make it jump, because I think that's what does make that tree so favorable to me. So um, I'm going to go explore here for a couple of minutes, just see if the light will come. If the light will come, we'll come back here. If not, there's a pathway I've seen inside in the wood that's behind this tree, and I'd like to get a shot of it. Um, and I'd like to get a shot of it actually in two ways, one of the pathway and then one with me in the pathway as well. So we'll head off in here and we'll get that shot next. And then we'll see if it's going to be the end of the episode if we get no light or if there is, we'll talk about it some more then. This is the final part now where I'm going to end up today. The light is actually fading quite fast. Um, that camera can be quite deceptive, obviously, because you know it picks up more light than it's actually there because I've had to overexpose it. But you can see a pathway that's running here in front of me. I've changed my camera now to portrait because I want to be able to get the trees that are there with the pathway running through. I'm going to take two photographs. So the first photograph I'm going to take without me in the frame, just the, uh, the pathway running through. And there's a stump that's right here, and I've got that in the center when I'm framing up the shot. So I'll then take a second shot when I'll go and stand in the frame, and that will then should give a nice contrast with the red jacket. I'll take off the bag, um, and I gotta stay still for about one and a half seconds. That's right now, but that probably would end up being around two seconds by the time we get to the um, time I can take the shot. So I'm going to sign out from this episode here. Pretty uneventful, unfortunately. I thought I was going to get nice light, but I didn't get nice light. It's quite dull and flat, but still, as always, I suppose it's always good to get out, good to experiment from a photography point of view, and always go back to a place that you know. You know, the more you try, the more chances you have of getting that beautiful shot. I pre-visualize a shot that's going to look here. That hasn't changed. I can still see what that shot would look like in here, but I don't have the conditions for it. So until the next time, thank you very much for tuning in. If it's your first time on the channel, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, it's long go for. Today I've come back here, we're at the very, very end of autumn, so I'm going to give a uh, opportunity to, I suppose. So now we're at the end of autumn, I've come back and I want to give one last shot. Uh, so now we're at the end of autumn and I want to give one last go to get a photograph of.
Thank you.